Hey everyone, thank you for coming. Welcome to Surge Stadium today for this special press conference for Weber State Athletics. I'm Paul Grewa, the Media Relations Director for Weber State Athletics. Uh, we'll first hear from Coach uh, Ron McBride, following which we'll hear from our Athletic Director, Jerry Bovey, and then we'll open up to questions. Well, I don't know what to, uh, quite what to say, you know, uh, I guess I could reflect on, on you know, I, I've, I've coached in, in every conference in the country in the last 50 years. Uh, it, it's been a great ride. Uh -oh. So be here. The only thing I know is the last 60 years has been football only, and that's really been my whole life. So I really don't know, if, you know, what the other life is. And, uh, and it's really, uh, in reality, it's all about the players. And uh, so the reason I, I, I I came to this decision, and it's my decision, nobody else's decision. I looked at where this program is. All the players are in, in, in the right classes. The program is exactly where it needs to be. And I just felt they need a new voice at the top. And, uh, and the only thing that's important to me at this point is the success of Weber State. I, I, I built this program, we built this program with what we had in mind. Everything is in place. Now we need somebody else to take it to the next, to the next step. Uh, and, you know, do I, I have no idea what I'll do without, without football because I don't know anything else because that's what I've done I don't have hobbies I don't do this I don't do that but but uh, I know one thing that, that we have a very good coaching staff here uh, hopefully we're going to be able to keep all that intact and I'll have some say about who is hired and hopefully it'll be somebody that, that has a similar philosophy that I have that can carry on what I'm doing, and I can still be part of this program. And I, I feel strongly that that uh, we just need we need just need a little, you know, just a little bump. And I think the bump will come with with the new head coach. I mean, that's uh, and and uh, yeah, I mean, that's not my to retire. That's not my favorite thing to do, uh, but I think it's the right thing at this point. Uh, you know, I would say that, that, you know, most of you know me because I've been in the state of Utah for, for so many years and, and coached <coughs> both at the University of Utah and at Weber. Uh, and I would say that, that, that the media has always treated me fairly. Most of you that are here I know. And uh, we've had a lot of laughs over the years. And, uh, and, uh, You've always printed what you what you thought, and you were always fair to me, and I appreciate that. Uh, everybody in this state uh, has treated me better than I deserve over the last, you know, I guess I was 26 years at Utah on and off, another seven here, but from the people at the airport to the people at wherever I went in the state, People always cared about what I was doing. They cared about how I felt, and and I don't think you know. And I coached a lot of places, but never uh, have I felt better when I'm in the state of Utah. And uh, this university, Weber State, has has. Uh, 
treated me unbelievably. They built me a new field out here. They built me two fields down there. Uh, you know, they they've given me every opportunity to succeed. And and people have bought into what we're doing here. And it's so exciting to me to see where this program is and where it can go. Uh, and I just want to be, you know, I, I just, I want to do the right thing for Weaver State, not the right thing for Ron McBride. The right thing for, for Ron McBride would be to stay here and just punish myself and punish the guys that work for me and, <laughs> and punish the players. But the right thing for Weaver State is for me to step down and let somebody push the envelope further than I pushed it. I mean, I, you have to look at it from the standpoint, okay, what, what can I do that's going to help Weaver State the most? And at this point, that's the way I see it. So, uh, you know, it, it's anybody that knows football coaches, they have big egos and they have this, they have that. And, and uh, the only thing I'm interested in really is the players and uh, their, their welfare and what I can do best for them. And, uh, you know, Jerry Bovey has treated me unbelievably well and uh, done a great job here. And same thing with Jerry before that. I mean, I just, I just you know, it's been a great, been a great run here. And, and basically, and the whole thing is really, you know, I love this group of players I, I have here. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, I'm, I, uh, uh, I love seeing, that's the biggest thing I'm gonna miss is seeing players every day, sitting down and BSing with them about whatever, and uh, dealing with their problems, and, uh, and uh, not being happy with them sometimes, and being happy with them other times, and being mad because they don't do this or do that. Uh, so it's, in, in football, the only thing that, that, uh, that you see is that the nice thing about coaching football is no day is ever the same. No matter how you plan it or, or you put out at 10 o'clock I'm going to do this, at 10.30 I'm going to do that, at 11 o'clock I'm going to do that, it never works that way. Because every time, every day is different because you're dealing with a bunch of, a bunch of young people and they all got different problems. And so, you know, you might think at 9 10 I'm going to do this, but at 9 15 somebody did something they weren't supposed to do. And so then you're dealing with that, or you're dealing with, but that's, that's what keeps you going. I mean, that's what keeps you young, really, is because you never have time to think about what the minuses are. Because you're always dealing with some problem no matter where you are. Uh, so this this career for has been unbelievable for me because I've seen the whole country plus all the islands plus all the Canadian Canadian states plus Tonga and Samoa American Samoa Western Samoa I mean I've seen it all and on somebody else's dime <laughs> so, so, so it's been. So it's been nice, and, and, and also see that you know how everybody lives in the world. You know, I mean, I kind of know by, by <coughs> recruiting, you, you get to see so many different families and how they live, and, and 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 what problems they have. Because every time you go into a different home, there's a problem, and then we sit down and we talk about your problems before we talk about your kid. You know, and. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, been, it's been like a, a, an education, you know, to see all these different places and all these different people over so many years. I mean, how can you, you know, how can anybody be more blessed than I've been? Uh, and that's what's hard about, 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 because I have no idea what retirement is. I, would, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know. All I know is that one time I went down to, to uh, Social Security to get to get my sign up for that deal. And I think I've told the story before. So I, so I went in there, and my wife told me, "Go down. They're going to give you money." 
you know. <laughs> so I went down and I woke up the second floor and go in there. And so I called her and I said, hey, this is the wrong place. There's a bunch of old people in here. <laughs> and she said, well, you're one of them. <laughs> Just go in and sign up and get your money. So, so uh, the, the hardest thing about this whole deal was telling, telling the players. Because I always tell them, you can't ever quit. You can't ever do this. You can't ever do that. And then I'm sitting there and I'm telling them I'm retiring. And I don't know, some of them took that real personal. And, and I don't blame them because I do tell them that all the time. And I do tell them it's not, it's not, it's not acceptable to quit. And it's not acceptable that we're going through a little bit of a tough stretch now on our football team. And I say, I always tell them, you got to fight through these stretches. And, uh, I just didn't know how, how else to do this. And it had nothing to do with where we are right now. It's up to me to get this, this ship righted in the next two weeks. But the future here is, 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 is so good. Because we have some, we have real talent here, and uh, I want to be part of what they do. I want to be part of their education. I promised their parents that I would see them graduate, and that's what I intend to do. Uh, but it'll just be in a little different aspect. And from the administration, from the president to Norm to Jerry to Jerry, they've treated me better than I deserve here. And. Uh, and I have nothing but the great, greatest respect for uh, for the opportunity that they've given me uh, to coach as we were still. So I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> well, today's really about the celebration of a coaching legend, <laughs> right? <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get him up here today. He and I met this morning at seven, and uh, uh, I thought it was going to be a tough tough sell to get him to come up here and sit on this uh, podium and talk to you today. In fact, uh, I had to bring candy. When I took the job here two years ago, I couldn't get him to come to my office. So I found out he liked good and plenty and hot tamales, and uh, he's here. So, you know, he's um, I, I don't think uh, we could get through the day without mentioning Mac's family that have always been there, supporting him. Well, Danny's here. Where is he? Danny's here. Yeah. Vicki and the girls. Mike. Uh, it won't be the same going on a road trip without the girls to make sure that coach can use his Kindle. <laughs> he, he loves his Kindle, but actually getting it turned on and getting it going takes a little work. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they've been a big part of uh, his career and uh, need to be mentioned today. Um, some of you may ask why today. Coach came to me last week and started to talk about, uh, in his mind, how retirement would go for him. And frankly, uh, doing this today uh, was important to our program so that our fans have an opportunity on Saturday to be here and celebrate his career with him. Uh, I think if he had his, his way, he'd have just waited until the season was over and packed his stuff and gone home. But uh, that was, it's important to us as a program and an institution to make sure that he has an opportunity uh, to get the credit that he deserves. Where we go forward from here will be determined another day. Uh, really, today is, is a day that that uh, needs to be what it is, and, and this is Coach Matt's day. So that's about all I have. Paul, if you want to open it up to any questions. Yeah, I'll open up to any questions for uh, Coach McBride or for Jerry. Coach, yeah. what does it mean to you be able to go out on your own terms? Well, you know, I always... I always hoped when uh, when I started out that, it, that when I decided that there was no way I could make a decision about what I was doing or not doing. But I never really saw myself retiring. You know, I, I saw myself uh, dying on the field, basically. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the way I always kind of looked at it. You know, I never saw myself. I never pictured myself being retired. You know. I, I pictured my heart blowing up and just, you know, somebody hauling me off. And that was it. You know, that's kind of how I always pictured it. Because people would ask me, well, how long do you want to coach? I said, well, when the Lord takes me, I'll go. 
you know, but uh, I guess I guess it's before before my time. Coach, you said you saw another role for yourself helping on the players here. What do you think? That's What's that? Gonna... You said you saw yourself having another role here with the players. What do you think that's going to be? Well, I have no idea except to, except I want to be involved in their academic life, in their off-season life, and the stuff they're doing. So, so I make sure that I have some part in them reaching their potential. Because, I, because I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I recruited these guys, so I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible to their parents, and I'm responsible to them. And so, when you go in a home and you tell people that then what you need to do is you need to fulfill that. So I don't know what they're going to let me do around here. And and everything depends on, on you know, what they do, who they hire, what, all that kind of stuff as to where, where I fit. But, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I'm definitely just, just not walking away. What I'm doing is shortening my, my hours work. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to have like a, eight to five job or something, or eight to five, and you just, you know, you kind of come and go as you please, but you don't have to be here at five in the morning, leave at, you know, 10 o'clock at night every day. What has it meant to you to see your players through the years go on to become coaches and other things and have success? Well, that's what it's all about. It's all about, it's all about them. It's not all about me. You know, it's all about what happens to them and how they progress and what happens to their lives. And, and, and obviously, you know when they're doing well, and you know when they're not doing so well. So, Coach, when you came here, you said something about Weber State being the right size school well, for the players. The right size school for the players? Yeah, you could get more players graduated. Well, I think I think because the classes are smaller. And you get more individual attention, and uh, you have more feedback as to what they're doing or they're not doing. And therefore, if you have a smaller class size, it gives the players more of an opportunity to get feedback, and the professors teach the classes. There's not some TA teaching the classes, the professors are teaching the classes. So you know right away if the professor doesn't like your kid or not. You know whether he's in class or he's not in class. Because they call you and tell you. Hey, Jim so-and-so, he didn't show up this morning at 8.10. And Norm Tarbox knows as soon as that, before I know. And then he knows, and then somebody else knows. And so pretty soon, everybody knows. So you know, on this campus, you know what's going on. There no, there's no secrets here. Okay. You met, um did you, did you come up with this decision before, or it sounds like maybe you came up with this decision sometime last week. It wasn't the, the getting hit on the sidelines last Saturday. No, I, I, I um, what I try to do is, is analyze every week where I'm at with this program and where my team is and how hard they're playing and, and am I doing the best by them. Because you, no matter what happens on Saturday, you look at yourself first to see, okay, am I doing a good enough job to make sure we have a chance to be successful on the field? And every time you make a few mistakes in a game that cost you a game, then you look at yourself first, look at the people that work for you, and look at the people who play for you. And so then that tells you if you're doing a good enough job or not. And we've lost games this year we shouldn't lose. Coach? And so, okay. and so that that, is, that has to do, and it, where, the head of any corporation, it goes back to the head of the corporation. And so you can't duck it and you can't blame it on somebody else, you know. Everybody wants to blame somebody else for their problems. Oh, we lose the game, that guy over there is fault, that guy over there, him over there. But reality, look at yourself, you know, because you're, you're the guy in charge. So I look at myself, I don't like what I see on, on, on a few Saturdays this year because I can still see the plays. You know, and that's like a horror story, you know? Yes, Coach? Uh, I've been a big fan of Weaver for 50 years, back in Weaver for 40 years, and I just want to tell you how great you play. 
We've got a great mentor. We love you. We love you, Coach. He said he loves you. Well, I, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you, you would come every Saturday and help us recruit, and you care so much about Weber State, and you're such a big part of Weber State. And that's what's, that's what's important for me. Because as a professor, you give up your time to tell you what a great experience you've had at Weber State, and you sell it to the people that, that, that uh, uh, Well, thank you, Coach. Thank you, so. So, yeah. Well, and, you know, Coach, I was going to ask you all these years. What were you going to ask me? All, all these guys, you know, uh, all these years, all these games. What is your favorite kind of day? I picture you, I might be wrong, I picture you want to play in the snow. I want to pick you in the mud, but tell me if uh, if that's wrong. You'd rather play uh, in you know in perfect weather, or do you like? Well, I love I love bad weather. You know, I mean, I, I do like I like to play in bad weather because I think it reminds me of when I was a kid <coughs> when it, whenever it rained or anything, we'd go out and play slow motion football. You know, in the mud, it was always fun. And so I always say, you know, the worst the, the worst days are better. I remember. I remember one time in Wisconsin, we were going to uh, play Michigan State. And some reporter asked me, ah, what do you think about the weather over here? I said, man, it's awesome over here. It's about 10 degrees, 10 degrees cooler than Wisconsin, so I, it's like a spring day. So, uh, and we went on kick Michigan State's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, when you look back over your career, and it has been a great career, is there any particular victories or moments that really I think every, at every, at, at, there's games that stand out every place you've been. Uh, you know, I think in, in, uh, in high school, when I was a baseball coach and we won the, we won the conference championship and, and, uh, and, and I was able to save my pitcher for an extra day because I wouldn't play on the field because it was wet. And they, and they wrote me up, you know, that was the thing they did. If you, if you didn't agree with something, and the day before the game, they had all the, pre the principals of my school, the principals of the other school, everybody's out there saying, oh, now we're playing today. I said, no, my field's too wet. I can't play on this field. Because I had this big right-hander, you know, and he, he needed another <laughs> day's rest, right? <laughs> so then the other principal said, well, we're going to write this up and put it in your, in your whatever. I said, do whatever you want. But I said, we play on this field, you're liable. So if somebody gets hurt, they're going to sue your ass, not mine. <laughs> so we played the next day and we won. And the pitcher had about 17 strikeouts. I mean, he was, he was, he was mowing them down. But uh, I think the, uh, in junior college, uh, we played for the, for the small college championship up in uh, Reading. And it was a mud, real <coughs> muddy day. And, and our kids gave everything that they had. I think we got beat 10 to 7. But it was a, it was one of those days where where it was just you know inch by inch by inch by inch you know uh, I think it, at uh, at Wisconsin it was no question was the Ohio State game when Byers was supposed to win the uh, Heisman Trophy and uh, and that day our running back ran for uh, I think 190 yards and and, and they took back Byers out on the stretcher. I think that was, a, and I can remember that it was a real cold day, and and, uh, they, and I was coaching the offensive line. And <coughs> they they they, uh, uh, and so we had a timeout call, and the offensive lineman wouldn't come to the sideline, and they're all out there, and you just see them yapping like this, right? And Dave McLean was the head coach, said, "Get your guys over here." I, I'm going like, get your over, get your butts over here. And they wouldn't come, they just stayed out there. And I, and so when the series was over, they came out and I said, what the hell are you guys doing? They said, hey coach, we just let them know we're gonna keep the rest all day. <laughs> and they did. I mean, they punished those guys. I mean, I, I can still see those Ohio State dudes falling down. It looked like a, looked like a bunch of timber wolves when they were going down. Uh, you know, so there, there's been, you know, Arizona, I think it was a game against Oklahoma that we had, where we needed a, we needed two first downs to win the game. We went on fourth down, I think, two or three different times, and it was all, you know, two yards, three yards, two and a half yards. 
Then we can start again, two yards, three yards, two and a half yards, or whatever, to get another first down. And it was just a slugfest. And you could hear, you could hear the pads popping, and you could see the, you could see the, you know, you could see the just, you know, the helmets, and you could hear the noise. I mean, it was unbelievable because, because it, because they were getting after it, you know, and, and it's just. It's kind of remarkable how it stays in your in your mind. That uh, you know, at Utah, obviously, that deal where Yerkeson kicked that field goal to kind of create the history at the University of Utah. I mean, that kick's still going, you know, and that changed the whole complexion of Utah football on that on that on that day. Uh, you know, at Kentucky, it was probably the five five overtime game with Arkansas, which was a, was a hell of a game. It was raining, everything sleep, and we're just slugging it out with them, slugging it out with them. And they had that six foot five quarterback. I was coaching the linebackers, and uh, we had a blitz on, and my guy, my guy missed the tackle, and he he threw the winning the winning score off a of guy missing the tackle, and so. You know, he made the tackle, we win the game, he didn't make the tackle, we lost the game. But that was a pretty, pretty exciting, pretty exciting day. Here at Weber, man, that Cal Poly game, and Trevor was a big part of that, that was probably the best football game we've ever played here. And, I, and Cal Poly, I thought it was the best team in the country that year. But I tell you what, we played a perfect game that day. And it's probably one of the best football games I've ever been involved in as far as execution, toughness, uh, with two teams really going after each other. The Montana game here that year, where, where we just kicked them around like they're dogs, uh, that was that was good because, you know, they think they're so good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and that's the thing that I miss the most is that those Montana games, because uh, one of the things, that, Montana, the, the two Montana schools are like playing BYU. You want to kick their ass, you know. I mean? <laughs> you know excuse my language. Now I can probably, since I'm since I'm not going to be the coach anymore, I could probably swear a little. But I got tell me is back to tell me I apologize to the church. <laughs> tell me is like my conscience. He always reminds me, to, Coach, don't use those words. I said, Oh, you can't be the how is you don't tell your mother, right? <laughs> hey, Coach, I was wondering, this is kind of a personal question. Do you still have the same motivation and enthusiasm for the game? And also, I'd like to know what's kind of on your bucket list as to what you want to do. And give us a hint as what you want to do that you haven't quite done yet. There's a lot of questions at once. Okay, so we're <laughs> Motivation. What is your, do you still have the same kind of motivation? And yeah, man, I'm still, yeah. I mean, I love what I do now. Don't get me wrong, man. I still, shoot. Uh, man, I still have, I love this game. I love the players. You know, I'm just, I'm just not as, as, uh, because I guess when you get older, you're not as philosophical. I don't know what it is. You get, maybe you get hardened, you know. But yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still excited about playing this week, and um, I want to get the most out of these players and figure a way to get them to get themselves turned around where they need to be. And uh, but yeah, I I wake up every morning thinking about football, and I go to bed at night thinking about football. So I don't know. That's all I think about, and, uh, and paying the bills, I guess. But that's about it. What what what's about some of the things you want to do that you haven't done? What I want to do. I had no idea. I mean, I would, I, I've done everything I've wanted to do in my life, really. I mean, I've seen every place. I've, I've participated in every sport you could think of. I've seen all the countries that I want to see. You know, I get, I get so many contacts in the islands that are unbelievable. And, and, you know, I've been to the most beautiful spots in the world. And I don't know. I mean, I. I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to go on a cruise, I know that. <laughs> I'm stuck on a boat for 10 days or something. <laughs> I'm not too excited about that. Guys, 
you, you get on a plane in Hawaii and you get off and there's all these people that are going on some cruise ship, you know. Oh yeah, I've been on, going on another cruise ship. And I look at these people and I said, I said, man, this ain't me. I'm not doing that stuff. <laughs> so I'm not going on a cruise. Mac, how are you feeling physically? You took a shot, I know, last Saturday, but... Well, I was hurting for a while, but I'm, I'm, I'm on a rebound. So, uh, so I feel like, you know, the biggest problem, I think, is just, I love to work out, but I haven't been able to work out since, since uh, August. I like to swim my laps, I like to, and that kind of keeps you sane. And that's the thing that I miss the most, is just that daily schedule of spending an hour and a half with your workout makes your, your mind a little more healthy. How important was it for you to get back out there Saturday? You got hurt in the first quarter. I know, but you don't feel anything until the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> once the game was over, you know, then then all of a sudden, oh, I just need hurts, you know. <laughs> but yeah, and all of a sudden, I you know, my legs swollen up and get blood in it and all that stuff. But when the games go on, you know, it's like the, the pain or whatever. It's not like doesn't mean much because you don't notice it. Because you limp a little bit, but you don't notice it because you're. You're concentrating on some other parts of what's going on. Are you going to be able to be on the sideline Saturday, or are you going to be in the press box? Well, you know, I'd love to be on the sideline, but I'll, I'll probably be, uh, I guess, upstairs. You know, I don't, I don't imagine. Yeah. You sit with the reporters. <laughs> oh man, I tell you. <laughs> I know. Rock, Rock has, has stoned me a few times. He's a little comic strip he has on. <laughs> you know, what are they called? Hey, what, what the, what's that? Little, what's it called? Rockism or something? Rock on. Yeah. Rock, on. Huh? rock on. Yeah, the rock on. And then he, he'll say something like, you know, it makes me look really bad. You know, like, oh, yeah, Coach Mack, look how stupid he is. <laughs> Any more questions? But I love you, you anyway, say Brad. Brad. I love you anyway, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right, thank you. Coach McBride will be available for some one-on-ones if you need it as well. Thanks for coming. All right, but I'd say one more thing before. Get sit down, Zippy. Sorry, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Coach. I thought you were finished. <laughs> no, I should man, have I, hey, It's my time, Zippy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There it was. Uh, yeah, gonna miss that, aren't we? <laughs> but I like to, you know, a lot of my assistant coaches are guys who played for me, and uh, and the, the the biggest thing, you know, in, in this coaching profession, so many of those guys that I've coached are doing so well in this profession, and uh, you know, and the, and the people here like Joe Bass and and Ralph and Tommy and. And, and uh, all the girls and my little my little love child over here who's pregnant now. <laughs> I'm so every day I see her and she's pregnant. I'm so happy for her. You know, she's got a real nice husband and it's, that makes me feel good. And so and my friend, my buddy Dutch, man, who takes care of me and Jimmy. And, so I don't know, man. It's it's way cool. So anyways. Uh, uh, that's about it, I guess. In, 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 um, so that's cool. Okay. All right, thanks again for coming. Okay.